What a result 2-2 in the Premier League between Arsenal and Liverpool. Madness saves at the end by Aaron Ramsdale. Liverpool, after being 2-0 down and thoroughly outclassed by Arsenal in the opening 30 to 35 minutes, clawed and fought and battled their way back into this game. But how will Gunners be feeling tonight? Because they re-established the eight-point gap. Massive points dropped by them from a 2-0 leading position in a game they were dominating. It's away at Anfield. As soon as that incident between Trent and Granite Xhaka happened, the crowd was up, the players responded, and Arsenal really couldn't get a grip of the game after that moment in time. It became very, very difficult for them indeed from there. I felt Arsenal defended too much in the second half. I think Arsenal... Fans will definitely, when they calm down, will look back at it and say, why didn't we attack? Why didn't we open up a little bit more and lay it on their chin? They played possum at times and they invited the pressure, but they didn't counter-attack with enough numbers. And it certainly feels from the outside looking in like two points dropped by Arsenal today as they were 2-0 up, as they were controlling the game, as they have been the better team this season. Liverpool won't care, though. Liverpool won't care a jot. It's only two points for them in their last three three Premier League games. But the comeback, having an impact on this title race, will mean a hell of a lot to them. And the last minute or so of the game, the last minute or so of the game, by the way, I did say it'd be a close game. I predicted 2-1 to Arsenal. It ended up being 2-2. So a few of you are saying Terry in the mud. Um, not really. <laughs> My prediction was like this close to happening. So I, I knew the game would be like today. I didn't think Arsenal would take such a command of the game. I thought the whole game would be like the second half where maybe they're absorbing pressure, counter-attacking and stuff like that. But you've got to give credit to Liverpool. You've got to give credit for Liverpool when it comes to that. Uh, Man of Duke says, Terry's lying. Please tell me what I'm lying about. Don't just say that. I'd love you to expand further for me. But as I say, um, what a last couple of minutes. What a last couple of minutes. Two saves from Aaron Ramsdale that, Maybe when, the, listen, if they win the Premier League, Arsenal, if they lift that trophy, maybe, just maybe, those two saves will go down in Arsenal folklore, in Arsenal legend, in Arsenal heritage, because they were nothing short, nothing short of spectacular. And Martinelli, who had a really good game, how, how, how did he not play that ball through to Saka? It had been one-on-one, -on -one, highly likely to finish. They could have won it themselves at the death. What a football match we just witnessed. City are the biggest winners in this. They're now six points behind. But they have that game in hand and Arsenal have to go to the Etihad. So it's, it's essentially in both their hands. It's now become quite even. Arsenal, sorry, City, if they lose their, if they win their game in hand, will be three points behind. They've then got to beat Arsenal at the Etihad. Currently, they have a superior goal difference. So that'll count as an extra point if that makes sense. But Arsenal, get a draw at the Etihad. You're still commanding. This is, you know, this is going to be a very, very interesting race indeed. In terms of the game today, listen, as I say, Arsenal in the first 35 minutes, I thought was spectacular. They limited Arsenal to Liverpool, sorry, to just one chance. Robertson probably should have done better. They took that, they got that second goal, Gabriel Jesus. And I really thought Arsenal would be comfortable from that point because Liverpool weren't at the races. But then sometimes in games, there's a kind of hair trigger moment, a hair trigger moment. Uh, one of the most famous games I rem remember this happening in was Man United away at Juventus. United were losing 2-0 on the night. We were getting battered. We were going to go out the Champions League. And then Schmeichel pulled off this great save. My dad turns to me and says, son, you might turn it round from here. You could turn it round from here. Sometimes all it takes is a good challenge, a good tackle, a good save. Two minutes later, we scored. We went on to actually dominate the game and win. And that's kind of what happened with the Granite Xhaka and Trent moment. Trent was having a stinker up until that point. But from then, there on, there on in, Trent Alexander-Arnold had his best game of the season, in my opinion. I thought he was tremendous, especially in the attack. The way he took the ball right towards the end past Sinchenko and crossed. That is Trent at his absolute best. But it took that moment with him and Xhaka. It took the crowd to get up. It took a almost a non-football related moment to really galvanize this Liverpool team together today. And they were sensational after that. You've got to give Liverpool credit. I do think, again, I've said this at the top of the show and I'll say it again, Arsenal sat back too much. 
Arsenal became too, not too complacent. I think they were getting overawed. I think the occasion, Anfield, the 11 year drought got to them a little bit, got to them a little bit. And they just, there was a time it was still 2 1. And Saka did some brilliant skill, but they had nobody else committing in the box. They had no one that came and filled his position. Now, I believe if they were at the, 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 at, uh, the Emirates, I believe the right back would have come, run up the pitch and covered that position and been there for a tap in at the back post. But they just sat back. And that conservatism, maybe just maybe, has gone and cost Arsenal those three points. Listen, if they would have attacked, maybe Liverpool score more. Maybe that's your thought, that's your narrative. And I understand that. But, 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 they just allowed, they just allowed Liverpool to keep laying the glove on them, for me. And I just wanted to see them attack a little bit more. But as a neutral, great game. I, 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 can't, I cannot say, I, I, I was saying to Jess at halftime, reminded me of being a kid. So, when you only had one game on a Sunday, you'd finish your Sunday dinner with your family, you'd put the TV on for the football. And it just always felt, maybe it's because as a kid, nostalgia kicks in exhilarating, brilliant to watch, wonderful to uh, listen to. And everything about today's game was sensational from a neutral point of view. From an Arsenal fan perspective, there'll be fuming at dropping, uh, going two goals down, uh, dropping a, uh, a lead from two up. Probably annoyed at Martinelli for not playing that ball through at the end. Some will probably say they bottled it. And then you'll have Liverpool fans who will be sitting there and saying, why can't we do this every week? Why only against Man United? Why only when we're losing to Arsenal? And the players galvanize and get together. What, what's wrong with the mentality in our team as much as celebrating it? And a lot of these thoughts will come when people calm down. But what a game. It is. It is advantage. It is advantage Man City as it stands right now based on Arsenal's record that the Etty had and goal difference. But who knows? Arsenal have responded before when, when, when having dropping points and having bad games, they may be able to do it. But I want your views and I want your opinions in the comment section now. Please hit the like and share button. And if you haven't pressed the bell notification button when you subscribe yet, get that done because the algorithm is not your friend. The algorithm um, will not always tell you when we go live. It's as simple as that. So turn on the bell notification. Get that done. I am going to go to your super chat soon. We're starring them, so don't worry. Going to have Dom Hassam out, Dords. Uh, gals here, Gunner Souls, Brandon as well, all coming on the show uh, to have their say about this game. But um, yeah, you talk 10 miles to school. Day. <laughs> Terry reminiscing about the days he used to walk 20 miles to school. I'm not that old, mate. My school was literally like 20 minutes, 10 minutes from my house. Uh, but yeah, fair enough. But yeah, it, today had like an old school feel about it. I loved it. And maybe it was because Arsenal were back towards the top. And when I was a kid, Arsenal were brilliant. And they haven't been for you know, the best part of 20 years. And I'm, th you know, and I'm, I'm 37 now. So maybe, maybe that's exactly uh, why I'm feeling very nostalgic this afternoon. Right, let's go to some of your super chats here. There's so many. Uh, don't come to our gaff with chest again. You were lucky today. Bottle in the title is what Sean Casey says. It's interesting you say Arsenal were lucky. I feel like you could push that towards both teams. Both teams will add elements of luck today. Both teams, we haven't even gotten to the penalty. We're going to wait for the panel for that. We're going to wait for the panel for that one. But there was luck for both teams today. I actually think on reflection, 2-2 two is fair. I would, have, I would imagine I don't do expected goals. I would expect Liverpool to have been higher. But I feel like a draw was probably a fair result, to be fair. Uh, fuming about that Martinelli pass to Saka at the end. Yeah, it, it was awful. It, it, that element was awful. That should be a, a perfectly weighted ball through, one-on-one, -on -one, chance to win it. And Martinelli just messed it up. Uh, Xhaka got to go. Igal going back uh, to him. Don't know why Xhaka has to go ASAP. You think Xhaka had a bad game? Or maybe because he, he stirred up the Arsenal, the, the Liverpool crowd and kind of got them back on side. I, under I understand that. I understand that. But there's more. I think there's more than just him at fault for that. Um, Arsenal bottled it, right, Terry? Yeah, that's to say, they collapsed. They, they collapsed today, and they dropped massive, massive points. Uh, Terry, a little reminder, Anfield is a humbler. It is, and in fairness, like, I didn't see, I haven't, again, if you've got the clip, send them to me. Most Arsenal fans were nervous about this game for today's exact reasons. I thought they could nick a very tight win against you. They just missed out on that. But, uh, yeah, anyone who was saying they were going to go to Anfield and smash them 6-7-8-0 is a liar, or, or they were being an idiot. 
Uh, time to roast some Arsenal in oil. Some arse in oil. Oil sharks coming is uh, what uh, Frocking Sheep says here. Uh, Anfield is a hard place. We got a point. If we can do the same at the Etihad, we're still in a good place. And that's very true. That that cannot be denied. That cannot be denied. Uh, this is our, on Arteta. He waited way too long uh, with the subs uh, when it was clear that we needed fresh legs. I'm fuming. 2 nil up and threw it away is what Amir Muller has got to say. Yeah, I understand that, Amir. Uh, Terry, I love my team in a bad season. You'll never walk alone. You should always love your team. But I always find it weird when people say, I, can't, I just don't watch the games when my team isn't playing very well. So it's always a strange notion to me. I'd watch my team if we were in the Conference North. Uh, Salah was fouled by Gabriel penalty. Uh, for me, I can understand why if it got given, there was pulling. But the, again, the way Salah went down, the way he kind of threw himself, I didn't think it was a penalty. But I understand why people would say it, it's got to be given. Um, I'll be consistent with it. I, I, I didn't. There was tugging and pulling. I think if you actually look at corners and free kicks and watch what both sets of teams do to each other, it's fairly similar. Um, but we'll talk to the panel about that. Zinchenko crying knowing City is coming for them is what Dyke says here. Well, I haven't seen that, but there we go. Did you see the linesman elbow <laughs> Robertson? No. Oh, geez, that's going to be an interesting one on Talk Sport later. Uh, we should have won the game, just didn't take our four, take our four or five clear cut chances. City winning the league. Arsenal have no bottle to win the league, is what Park says. Jerome says, great game as a football fan. Arsenal bottled the two goal lead because they were too defensive. Bottle jobs is what Jerome says here. Uh, this is from uh, Javin uh, Jose, or Jose, depends how you pronounce it. Um, 4.76 XG versus 1.81 of Arsenal. Liverpool deserve the win. Fair enough. If you're an XG person, um, Arsenal time-wasting FC deserve, like, deservedly conceded. I mean, it almost benefited them as well, though, by getting all that time added on at the end. But imagine if that would, that would almost be like a Troy Deeney moment if, if Martinelli played the ball to Saka and he scored. You know, when the penalty was missed, um, Leicester missed the penalty, Watford went up the other end and scored. It was We almost got that. And I've never seen that in the Premier League before. Uh, big props to Liverpool. Honestly, a very intense game. Ramsdale definitely um, had saved Arsenal too many times this season. It's great from Ramsdale at the end. Great. Uh, Miss Penn, Nunes one-on-one, Canate chance, three winners. Yeah, but that's also why I necessarily... Maybe you can argue the performance means they deserve to win. But when you miss guilt edge chances, that make, that's, my view is that means you don't deserve to win because you didn't take the chances. Maybe. Um, but performance-wise, I think you've got a great argument. Fantastic game for a neutral is what Ray says. Yeah, it was, mate. It was absolutely out of this world. It was a stunning game of football to watch. It, it truly, truly was. Uh, the linesman should be sacked. Look, I want to see a, a close-up. I get a feeling that Robertson grabbed his arm and he just said, get off my arm. You'll probably find it was an accident in terms of hitting him in the, hitting him in the throat. Um, and nothing will happen. If, Rob, if Robertson's touched him, nothing will happen because if they try and do something to the linesman, the FA will go to the rule book and say, well, you can't put hands on hands on the ref. If you Theoretically, if you touch a ref in any way, shape or form, you should be banned. If they go for the ref, the ref will go for them. And I think Liverpool will pull back from it. That would be my take, uh, which is fair because it's a nothing. You know what I mean? Grown men, get over it. Um, I still think it's a point gained uh, better compared to previous years. It's still in our hands, regardless of what the naysayers say, is what Nikhil says. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold was playing in midfield and his world class. Listen, he was caught out early a few times defensively, turned to... Listen, get him out of defensive positions and he's fine. Defensively, he's shit. I'm going to be blunt. He's all awful. Put him more advanced and he's a brilliant player. Uh, Terry's thick. Yeah, I'm, I'm so thick. But if you knew how successful in life I was, I'd love to, you'd love to be as thick as me. <laughs> I'm about to go out and buy a £120,000 car. I'm that thick. <laughs> Happy Easter, you mug. <laughs> I love these people. I love these people. I love these people. Um, this here says, uh, Arsenal fan here, I told over and over again that we are not winning the league. You keep saying we are because you're dating Jess. You're a coward. <laughs> the thing is, it's a prediction. And I believe that you're going to win the league. People say, oh, it's only because you're dating Jess. Me and Jess have been dating the whole of this season and last season. 
So when I was slagging Arsenal off last year, riddle me that one. Abs. Thank you for the super chat. But yeah, last year, go back and watch my videos last year when I was with Jess. I was even out in LA last year. I criticized Arsenal when they weren't doing very well. They're doing well this year. I'm praising them. By the way, I've been very uh, detrimental to Liverpool this year. Am I praising them today for their performance? Am I praising Trent for doing well? That's called being unbiased, Abs, my friend. Nothing to do with Jessica, what I say or do. Simple as that. If you think, if you think me predicting your team to win the league makes me a coward, I, you need to make that make sense. Like, I, I won't go against what she says. <laughs> then you don't know me, brother. Go back and watch mine and Jesse Straight's fact shows where we've actually had fights on camera because I don't agree with what she's saying. Come on, my friend. I've got a much bigger backbone than that. But if you want to phone into the show and accuse me to my face, I dare you. Actually, if you do come on the show and you stumble bum me, you stop me from reacting, you call me out and you catch me, I'll pay your rent or mortgage for you, your mum and your dad for a year. I give you that as a challenge, my friend. I give you that as a challenge. DM me, I send you the link. I'll pay your rent and mortgage for, the, for a year. Your family will love you. A uh, great game, but as an Arsenal fan, uh, nailed it. Sorry, as an Arsenal fan, nail it, IV. I don't know what that means. Um, Liverpool played well and, from my opinion, deserved to miss the spot. Uh, we should have attacked and not sat back. Saka was not in the game. Yeah, Saka was nowhere near the game. Nowhere near the game today. He, he had a poor, poor performance. You're right. Imagine not being a football fan. Imagine. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Ramsdale won the title of... of Zinchenko cast us it, cost us it. I hear what you're saying there. Sorry. Uh, are Liverpool fans celebrating a draw? You should always celebrate a comeback, my friend. You always celebrate a comeback. 2 2 is fair, Terry. Liverpool battered them and deserved to win the game. But Arsenal were the away team and dominated the majority of the first half. So it was 50 50 for me. Liverpool had some better chances, but I think a, a, a draw was a fair result. I uh, hope Arsenal win the title, but no team can be champions if you don't win against the reigning champions at home. That's not true. Man United, I don't know if Man, did Man United beat Arsenal in 98, 99 season at uh, uh, Highbury? I don't know. I swear City barely win at Liverpool away and have won the league many times. So I don't think that's necessarily true, my friend. Uh, fans arguing XG and all I see is missed chances is what David says here. Uh, this says Arteta bottled it. You got uh, peppered for 45 minutes and he decided to go uh, to a back five with 20 minutes left. Southgate behavior. Also, that Trossard sub was needed 20 minutes earlier. Is what he said there. Um, there, there we go. And was I rattled? Oh, yeah, I mean, that's, if that's your banter saying I was rattled when I called a man out, and now he's gone silent. He's disappeared. He ain't DM'd me yet. He doesn't want this smoke. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but there we have it. I've got some more super chat. We're going to save some of the super chats when the panel come out. Otherwise, we're going to be sitting here for about an hour because you lot are such amazing viewers. And I love you all. That doesn't mean I won't challenge you, though. As I say, that's, uh, that's, that's what I do. Um, there we go. There we go. A lot of you are calling me a coward because I predicted Arsenal to win the league. As I said before, come on the show and call me that to my face. And if you do it, I'll pay you rent for a year. Pay you rent for a year. Look at that. But if you, do, but if you come on and you, you act all nice and you're not, you, haven't got, you haven't got that chest on camera, then you need to offer me a forfeit as well. Like you got to sing a song live on the air with your face and show us your birth certificate so we all know your real name. <laughs> then we see he's a coward. Um, this here says, moments you can say Ramsdale saves were moments. They were. They were brilliant. They were. They were absolutely brilliant. They definitely were. Uh, upset about the result, but it. Uh, but if we don't do it this season, we will come back even stronger next season. We sat back way too much and let them back into it. Like I agree with the second part of that, one hundred and ten percent, that you let them come back into it, and, and you ju you just shouldn't have done that. You just shouldn't have done that. Uh, the phrase bottle it is overused, but it's rightfully used today. Liverpool are lucky to get a draw. If they hadn't got stupid, sorry, stupidly wound up, uh, they would have been outplayed. Naive by Arsenal uh, is what Daniel says here. Thank you, Daniel, for that super chat, my friend. That's really, uh, really generous of you. Uh, it's not an easy game, but good result. It's not an easy place to go, is what Wow says here. I hear where you're coming from, bro, with that. But when you're too, like, if you're, I wonder what, if you're 2 0 up, though, and dominating the game, do you still feel that way? You know, if you're 2 0 down and came back, maybe that's. I just feel there's 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 
you know, it's not good enough, really. It's not good enough, really. It really isn't. Uh, Ramsdale just won us the league. City lost is what Neto says. Looking at this from a completely different angle. Uh, start Z- uh, TNE instead of Zinchenko. Zinchenko did the Trent against Salah. Leave Jesus till the end. Uh, take out Odegaard for Vieira. It's what Robert believes should have happened. Yeah, I don't think you should t- take an Odegaard off, personally. Uh, if he had that ball, the breakaway at the end, he freds that pass. But that's hindsight. That's hindsight for you, eh? Uh, Xhaka has to look at himself. Arsenal were cruising. Trent was getting cooked. Gave the crowd a lift. And Trent had a great game after this moment. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. You can't deny it. Um, I disagree. Saka was good today. This comes from a Spurs fan. Uh, That little flick uh, pass to beat defenders was class. Look, he, he didn't have an awful game. But you judge the big players by their moments in these games. And he just was too invisible today. Um, you know, what would he get? Five or a six out of ten? Maybe I'm being maybe I'm being too harsh there, but I didn't, you know, I've seen I've seen Saka on fire this year, and he, he was nowhere near that standard for me today. But the Gooners coming on soon may completely and utterly disagree with that. Uh, where is Lee at? I need to apologize. Mikel Arteta is completely out his depth today. Subs poorly timed and totally wrong. You're not gonna turn on Mikel Arteta. You're not gonna turn on Mikel Arteta. After one poor result, are you? Come on now. Criticize him, but you can't be talking about he, he's out of his depth. He, he made the subs wrong today, but you're not going to... Surely, you're not going to turn your back on him after that. After the season he has ha- given you so far. You're still top of the league and clear by six points, by the way. You're still six points clear. Wow. That is interesting to me. Uh, the Mancunian way here, City fan says, back in City's hands, let's go simple facts. It's also in Arsenal's hands as well, though. It's in both. There's a slight advantage to Man City because they play you at home, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing run in now, and I cannot wait for it. Cannot wait for it. Right, keep the super chats coming. We're going to bring them up uh, for the viewers in the panel. We're going to bring them all out now. Sam's going to have his say first. Hit the like and the share button. Make sure you're subscribing. We're nearly on 2,000 likes as well. So get that up for us right now, my people. 7,000 people tuning in. Amazing numbers. I know I'll give it back to some of you, and you definitely give it to me, but that's what we're about. It's no echo chambers. You know, it's how I don't do what some other content creators do. I don't block or ban the people that challenge me. I just don't. It's not what I do. I just fight back for you. Building some strength. Let's do it. Panel time. Let's go. Um, hello, I want to go to Hassan first of all. You, you came from behind, you drew the game 2 2. Talk to me, Hassan. Listen, this was a proper Barclays game right here. Proper Barclays. It was beautiful. It was fights. It was atmosphere. It was players kicking each other. I absolutely loved it. Look, from my perspective, the game is simply a tale of two halves. In the first half, we were absolutely crap. When that second goal, when Jesus scored the second goal, I'm like, oh, here we go again. Like, this is just going to be a long ass day. But then we turned up in the second half. We played some unbelievable football. And to be honest, Arsenal fans, if you want to blame anyone today, you have to blame Granit Xhaka for making Anfield start to sing again, for making the players pissed off. Because it's so obvious what's happening in this Liverpool team. They're all mentally fatigued. They're all tired. They just don't give a shit anymore. You give them a reason to give a shit, they'll perform. And that second half for me, was reminiscent of good Liverpool. That was 18, 19, 19, 20 Liverpool. Just boxed Arsenal into their own box, dominated them, created a thousand chances. Should have won the game. Uh, I think Salah, he did the reverse. In the first half, he was one of the few who played well. In the second half, he did the opposite. The others played well, and then he played. Like, he, I don't think he played like shit per se, but he just couldn't score. And, you know, for me personally, I look, I look at this performance in that second half, and this is what we need more of. We need a performance of players who give a shit. We need some people who wear the, the, the Liverpool shirt, who represent Liverpool on, 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 on the biggest stages at Anfield or away from home and play to this level. And for me, second half, Trent turned up, Robertson turned up, the centre-backs, everyone just played 
unbelievably well in that second half. And what I love the most after Firmino scored, they actually went, they got the ball, they wanted to get the third. They were they didn't like have enough of just scoring two. Like they kept on playing and 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 it was unbelievable for me. Trent, I agree with Terry, had his best performance all year long. A lot of these players, Henderson as well, I give him massive credit for me. I thought he had an unbelievable performance by Henderson standards. Thiago Alcantara once again unbelievable when he come when he come on and 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 he changed the game positively for us. Nunes should have scored. Salah could have scored. Jota could have scored. This could have easily been three to Liverpool, four to Liverpool had we taken our chances. But for me, I know I'm going to sound like a 75 year old manager. I'm just going to say I'm very proud of the performance because this second half for me has probably been our best half of the whole year. This is genuinely one of our, probably no, second best after the United six goals and one half. But this is about second best half of the whole year in terms of performance. Unbelievable performance. And I'm just proud. And I have no reason to shout. I have no reason to be angry because they left it all on the pitch today. And for me, um, I don't think in terms of the title race, this is a, like this is like exciting for anyone because a draw doesn't really take it away from Arsenal's hands and it doesn't give it to City's hands either. I agree with Terry once again. I think it's still in both of their hands, to be honest with you, because they both could easily still win it at this moment in time. But for me, if you want to blame anyone, Arsenal fans, blame Granite. Never make Anfield angry. Never, ever make Anfield angry. That's that's what costs you to, today's game. Because I'll be real with you, the players, when they started, I'm like, oh, this is more of the same. They just don't give a shit anymore. And then boom, they, he made Anfield turn up. The players cared. They started to fight. And and here we are. It's 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 two two now. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I hear that. Um, Igal, from your point of view, a lot of people are saying you bottled it today. Is that how you see it as a gooner? <sighs> we didn't lose. At least, like honestly, the, you can't say we bottled it. If if we lost, you would have said we bottled it. But the fact is, we were we were under a lot of pressure. Liverpool looked like the only team that were going to win. And even at the end, we still had a chance. The reason why we were dejected is because we had a two-goal lead. We are comfortable. Everything looked good. And everyone, of course, is going to say Granit Xhaka. But, of course, I think they, that was their plan. Their plan at the time was to try to maybe get one of our guys sent off, try to uh, try to get us into uh, a, a row. Because at that point, they were losting. That's they were not a plan. They needed, they needed a plan. To themselves. They, needed to get them, uh, they needed something to get themselves up for it. And that's what got them up for it. That's what got them going. And they ended up getting the goal from there. And you know what? At times, we were fortunate that we, that we, that we didn't concede because Ramsdale was on his job today. You got to give Ramsdale a lot of credit. And you know what? I think at the end of the day, you can't say either of us were, you can't say we were, uh, we bottled it, but you could say, you know what, Liverpool were the better team in the second half and for majority of the game. We absolutely switched off and went too defensive and maybe we should have changed the tactics slightly. But even that, you never know if we would have, if we would have gone for it, if we would have conceded on the other end, because Liverpool looked like the better team in the whole second half. I get get that. Brendan, I mean, do do you see it the same way or, or, you know, what did the manager get wrong today? Why did you lose control in the second half? What could Arteta have done differently to get back a stranglehold in the game? There's a few things that could have been different, uh, done differently, Tell, to be honest with you. Um, if we break it down, uh, let's just put it this way. The title race has got 10 times harder now. We have to go to the Etihad and get something. And that's going to be a difficult, difficult task. I thought the first 30 minutes, you couldn't ask for a better performance from a team away at Anfield. Arsenal were exceptional. Um, We was absolutely battering them. Everything that you would want going away to Anfield, we had in that first 30 minutes. Quieting the crowd down as quickly as you can. Score a couple of goals. Create chances. Look threatening. Stop Liverpool from playing as well. And we did all of that in the first 30 minutes. And then we did the total opposite towards the end of the half. Granite Xhaka, I don't know why you're getting involved in stuff like that. He has a tendency of doing things uh, like that. But we see it a couple of seasons ago, yeah? we, we When uh, Liverpool were at their best, we played well. Um, and then Mikel Arteta had a little bit of a, a scuffle on the sideline with Jurgen Klopp. It got the Anfield crowd up and all of a sudden Liverpool took over. And very much the same happened today. The only good thing about that was it was towards the end of the first half. So for us, I thought the half-time whistle came at the right time. Obviously, Liverpool got the 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 goal, and it was a great time to go in at half-time because 
nobody can tell me that Mikel Arteta didn't tell them players at half time, look, go out, second half, regain control of, of, of the ball again, regain control of possession, just, you know, first five, ten minutes, regain a bit of control of this game, quieten their crowd down again, and then we can look to go again. But we didn't do that. And from that moment in the first half towards the end, we never regained control of that game. We was far too defensive. We allowed Liverpool to come on to us. They created the better chances. And on another day, we would have lost that game. And like I say, <laughs> what, like we only have ourselves to blame. Arteta can take some of the blame today because I, I think you know he should have made his substitutions a bit earlier. I also think he made the wrong substitutions in certain areas as well. I don't think Odegaard should have come off the pitch. I think Tierney should have been brought on a lot sooner than what what he was. Um, the Kivior one as well, that didn't make much sense to me. You know, um, bringing in a kid who hasn't really played much football for Arsenal, if any at all, in a big game at Anfield where, you know, we need to win, really. I mean, the point, we'll take the point. But again, like I say, it's, it's made this title race 10 times harder because if we don't get something at the Etihad, Man City go uh, in front of us on, on goal difference. We've still got to play Newcastle away. We've got to play Chelsea. I know they're not great this season. I'm expecting us to beat them. But we've also got Brighton as well at home who have been playing well. All in one big clump of fixtures. We can't afford now to drop any more points. Mm. You know, so disappointed, Tell. I really am. No, I, I get that you're disappointed. Um, I'm going to go to Justin Souls in a minute. Rax here with us, another Liverpool fan. From your point of view, great second half. I'm seeing a lot of Liverpool fans in the comments section, Rack, say we were actually better in this second half than we were against Man United. And I kind of get where they're coming from. But what did you make of today? I mean, the overall performance was good. Um, but ultimately, it's a day where we both end up losing to some extent because that's that's the currents for our top four, in my opinion. Um, the gap is way too big now. Uh, we needed to beat Arsenal and still stuff needed to fall in our favour um, to get top four. Now I think the gap's too big. So, yeah, look, the performance was good. I'm happy about that. Um, but just bigger picture, it means next season is going to be uh, it's going to be a tough one. Recruitment's going to be tough. And in terms of the game, first 30 minutes, Arsenal were, were clearly the better team. Like so many other performances this season, we've been abject, lethargic, um, almost disinterested, and Arsenal were on it. Um, and then I don't, I mean, I, I don't really believe in things like, you know, certain instances where uh, Xhaka does something or whatever. But we started playing better. We got ourselves back into the game and got the goal. And that gave us something to, you know, something, uh, an anchor from which to, to build upon. Um, and in the second half, yeah, we were the better team and we had better chances. I mean, Mo Salah missed, also missed a one-on-one -on -one in the first half. Um, and overall, we had the better chances. But ultimately, if you don't take your chances, you kind of get what you deserve. And we, we, yeah, we, got, we got a draw. We'll take it. But it just means the end of the season now, last nine games or whatever, is going to be a bit flat. Yeah, listen, I, I understand that. I think you needed the win. You're 12 points now off of Man United, who are in fourth. With nine games to go, uh, you basically need Man United to lose half their games, essentially, is what yeah. you're going to need to happen. And it's not going to happen. So, yeah, you know, these three it's games... The thing had... is, it's not so much that. It's, OK, maybe maybe United drop points, maybe Newcastle drop points, but then Brighton and Spurs also have to drop points, more points than we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. You, need four, so you need four teams to all drop 12, 13 points. They're not all going to do it. I don't even know what the probability on that is. It's probably something like... 20,000 to one in actual, not in, in terms of the bookmakers, but in reality, it's probably about 20,000 to one for yeah. all of them to do it um, at the same time. So I, he, I, he, I hear you on that. Um, uh, Jess is here with us. Uh, obviously, disappointing result for you today. Why do you, why do you think you, you lost a two-goal lead? Is it, is it that the players let the, the, the occasion get to them, managerial decisions in terms of substitutions, or were Liverpool just too good to handle in that second half like what, what do you put it down to Jay? it was a combination of all of those things i mean before the game even started i remember speaking to you guys and saying that i didn't expect us to get a result there because anfield is a very difficult place to go and even though people are making it out to seem like we should have just walked away with the three points anfield i think 
Rack, you, you can let me know how many games have you guys lost at home this season? One, two, uh, Leeds, and is that it? I know we've lost Leeds, yeah, like one or and something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah, it's a difficult place to go, and Arsenal don't have a good record there, so I didn't expect anything from this game, and so I think this is a game where you know Liverpool will look at it and probably feel like confident off of the back of that like that felt like a good result for them um from where they are and arsenal fans will feel like it's a loss because we dropped a two goal lead um but in context i I still feel like it's a point gained because it's a difficult away ground to go to that we don't usually get anything from um am i really disappointed about the the two goal um dropping that two goal lead absolutely like from there i thought we were definitely going to win the game and I don't want to blame it all on Granite Shaka. I know that people are trying to blame it all on Granite. I think he ignited it a little bit, but he was our best midfielder for the entire game. Odegaard and Thomas Partey were not good in this game, and he was. So to blame him for the entire game because he ignited the fire, like, I get that, but I feel like that's just an agenda that's reinvigorating itself off of the back of not wanting him at the club for years prior. Um, he was fine. What did you feel like Partey did wrong? I felt like he didn't do enough. You don't have to do anything wrong to not do enough. And I don't think that he controlled the the midfield, especially in the second half. I don't think Odegaard or Thomas Partey were doing enough. I thought Granite Xhaka was pretty much the main guy on the ball, getting us um, open on the left-hand side. Thomas had some good interventions in the midfield, but I thought ultimately, like, when we know Thomas is playing a good game, he runs that shit. And I don't think any of us can give Thomas Partey more um, than maybe a five or a six in that game, as well as Odegaard. Like, that's what I saw. I didn't see a midfield that was doing the normal things that I usually see. And maybe that's give, I need to give credit to Liverpool for that. But Xhaka was our best midfielder on the day. And in terms of the substitutions, the Trossard one made sense to me. The Kivior one did not. I thought just if you want to shore up the defense, just take Zinchenko off and bring Tierney on. Don't bring Kivior in. I mean, his first kind of introduction into the game was basically almost giving away a goal. And I do believe he's going to be a good player for Arsenal, but it was just too much on the day. And so Arteta has to kind of take a little bit of that. But Grant's Grant, big picture for me is point gained. And obviously we have to go to um, the Etihad and get something from that. But yeah, it's it feels really disappointing. But I think once all the shock wore, wears off a little bit, I think people will look back on this and say, we got a point. And it was a point that I don't think many people actually thought we were going to get. Um, let's be for real. A lot of people thought we were going to lose this game. I hear a lot of people did. Um, do you agree with what Jess said earlier in uh, in what she in what she was stating there around? It wasn't two points dropped; it was a point gained. Yeah, definitely. Because, like you said before earlier, you said that Man City haven't won at Anfield and they still win the league. So, winning it wasn't a must-win game. Yeah, it was two 0 up, but Anfield, Liverpool, for me, they didn't play amazing football. It was set piece after set piece. They're winning free kicks, corners, free kicks. I, I was like, how many set pieces can we take until we concede? And people are actually judging. People are saying, why did he put Kavir on? The reason why he put him on, because how many set pieces they were taking. And we had to win those aerial duels because they had Konati, Van Dijk. They had so many guys that were going to beat us. We didn't have enough guys in defence that were going to win enough headers. So that's the reason why he put him on. And that last chance... That last chance for Martinelli, it was a simple pass. Simple pass towards Bakayo Saka. I don't know how he didn't manage to give him that ball. But it's one point. People in the comments, I, I was when I was sitting here, Terry, and you're reading the Super Chat, people were saying, bottling it. Bottling what? We've still got a six-point lead, and the only Oculus have got a game in hand. But bottling it, and, and some Arsenal fans that are actually saying that Mikel Arteta, I'm saying this guy doesn't know what he's doing and the substitution that he's making. I don't understand because it's still in our hands. We can go to City and we can get, even if we lose against City, our goal difference is not a, if we can get our goal difference up, I think we're only like four goals behind them in goal difference. So even if we lose to City, we can still, and the, the fixtures that we have, we can still get our goal difference back up and we can still win the league. So 
bottling gate that that is that is very very harsh because Man City haven't won at the league. Pep Guardiola never won at Anfield, and yeah, Anfield is a tough tough game. Two 0 lead, we should have won it uh, by half time. Two one, that goal that Mohamed Salah scored. The how lucky was that? Jordan Henderson did not even mean to pass to Mohamed Salah, and they make it two one, and everything was going for them. Decisions making was going for them. All the free kicks that they were getting, referee was card happy today. Amount of yellow cards that he was given in the game, I do not understand. Like, let the game go in because the reason why he got feisty oh, is because is the reason why he got feisty because he's letting so many challenges. The one in Conati or Martinelli or Jacques, sorry, he's he kicking him three, four, five times. Referee says play on, and then but obviously Jacques is gonna get angry. The reason why he got angry is so how is he not giving a free kick for that? And then as soon as one of the local players gets touched, straight away free kick. The referee did not handle the situation properly, and yeah, it, it, I'm not saying it cost us the game, but that's the point. One of the reasons why the crowd was that excited because the referee let all the challenges go. But yeah, one point gained is not three points lost. It's one point gained. It's still in our hands. I believe we can go to uh, Etihad and get uh, at least a point. Mm. Uh, Gail, you, do you agree with that? You also mentioned the referees as well. What are you saying on that, bro? Paul Tierney is a joke of a referee and he had no control of the game. I fully agree. Consistently giving giving Arsenal Arsenal harsh punishments on uh, on the yellow cards and letting Liverpool slide. I just felt like he wasn't he he didn't do a good job refereeing the game today. It is what it is. You guys can say excuses as much as you want, but just look at the numbers. Seven games, no wins under Paul Tierney. Is it a coincidence? I'll let you guys decide. 100%. I mean, listen, um, we, we're going to go to some of the Super Chats. We're going to come to Souls in a minute. We've got a lot of Super Chats to go through, and I kind of want to get your reaction to this as a as a panel here. Uh, Neto says, we bottled the lead, no doubt, uh, but not the league. Uh, we, have to, we have to see the full picture. Liverpool has only lost twice, uh, one being against Real Madrid. Can't cry, eight more to go. Um, yeah, of course, there's a big difference between if people want to call today bottling it or collapsing. I mean, I'm getting called out on Twitter because I said they collapsed. Someone says, Terry, it's a bit over dramatic. Getting slapped seven nils collapsing. My like, brother, <laughs> today ain't about me. Today's not about me and my team. Um, that, that's that's like typical what about her. Uh, Arteta fouled to manage the game, lost because we uh, we could not defend, especially Zinni. Uh, Tierney should have come on sooner. Only Gabriel was present. Do you agree with that, Soul? Do you, do you believe that the manager is culp- culpable according to Sky King here? Oh yeah, I've, I've been I've been here waiting for someone to call Arteta out because those substitutions were bad. Simply put, look, I defend Arteta and I've always defended him even through the top periods of the eighth and eighth. But today it was on him as well. Bringing on like there's so many other ways he could have solid like solidified us defensively. He could have moved Zinchenko into the Xhaka role, keeping Zinchenko on and making that midfield assured as well. And then he could have brought Tierney on for Xhaka. That means, you know, you've not got the yellow card of Shaka potentially getting a red card. You can still keep the control, the defensive solidity. You, then what you he could have done a, a secondary thing, bring Saka into the right wing back and guess what? Push Ben White into centre back and turn it into a five that way. There's so many other ways he could have done this without bringing in someone who's not played at this level before. Bringing on Jakub Kibuyo in a game like this was a reckless decision. Now, of course, hindsight could have been a brilliant thing and it could have been one of the tactical masterstrokes if we had gone and won this and gone, you know what, Kiwi, what a defensive performance. But that was, the chances of that happening were 1% and him doing what he did was 99% likely to happen. Now, the other thing is, it's not even about the substitution, it's about how we came out in that second half. We were every single fucking time we got the ball, what did we do? Stoke City football. Oh, here's a long shot. Oh, I have the ball back. Have the ball back. Have the. We were just letting the pressure get to us. I was, I was surprised it wasn't too too earlier than that. Forget the substitution. We lost our heads. Arteta lost his head, and everyone today is cold pro. This is a this, people who look. I know people are gonna say tomorrow you're gonna feel different. I'm not. This was a stupid game. This was a stupid performance by these guys. Tune it up. You know what? Everyone's right. We fucking bottled it. There's no other way of putting it but then saying you can't be 2 0 up as champions, potential champions this season, and bottle it the way we did. We come into that second half, all we needed to do was play our football, pass it around, keep it simple, keep it tidy. What do we do? Okay, there's pressure on us. The last thing you should be fucking doing is giving them the ball back. Why are we constantly losing possession? They had 70% possession in the second half. 
as a team that's two and up, you keep no two one up. You keep the ball. You keep it simple. Keep it tidy. Wait for your opportunities to come. We're the away team. We should never have been getting under pressure the way that we did. But you know what? It's happened. We've got to learn from it. The one thing I will give this Arsenal team credit for is every single time we we face adversity, we've never allowed it to happen the second time. When we've had low blocks, for example, against Newcastle, we made sure the next time we play a low block, we know what we're doing. I hope this is a learning curve. I hope for a, for a fact that we sit here and go, when we're under pressure, this is what we need to do. Because we do have a novice manager. As much as he's been here for three seasons, he's still learning. And I hope this is another learning curve and I hope they learn it quick. I hear you on that, mate. Very, very well said. Very passionate there. It's good to hear you speak in your mind. Uh, Arsenal fans celebrating a point, but they just blew the title. Six points, one game in hand and the Eti- game of the Etihad. Huge momentum shift and Arsenal don't do well with adversity. I fully well, disagree that, there. That, but yeah, nobody that's, that's, even that's, celebrated that's, it. That's that's the weird thing. Wait, hold on, hold on really quick. Who celebrated which one of us has sat on here and celebrated a point? I don't think any of us has sat here and been excited. The only person that came on here that was excited was Hussam. That was it. Even Rack is sitting there. Even Rack is nobody, <laughs> nobody celebrated. Of course, this puts Manchester City in a really good position. But all season, people have been telling us that Man City is going to do this, Man City is going to do that. Man City are doing what they always do. They're a great team, and they're going to close the gap on us. They may win out. They may not, but Arsenal need to be better than them, and that's really difficult to do. So ain't nobody celebrating anything, but if you think I'm going to sit here and act like getting a point at Anfield is a bad thing, when we maybe if we really looked at it, we probably could have lost that game. Salah missed a penalty. They had a lot of really decent chances in the second half. I'm not about to sit here and, and scoff at a point for your sake. But thank you for the super chat. So, uh, you know I'll just draw a little Can bit. I just, of, I, just like to, oh. I just like to draw a little bit of a parallel. So, so absolutely, Arsenal still have it all to play for. And I said, I've said for a while that I think Arsenal are going to win the league. They're in the driving seat. It's not going to be easy. City are relentless, and we've seen that in the last few seasons. Um, there was a there's a little bit of a parallel. There was a few seasons ago we went to United. Um, it was a, it was the game where Rashford got injured early and basically hobbled around for the whole game, and we took a two to a two, uh, sorry a nil nil draw rather than winning rather than going for the jug. Well, wasn't that the game where there were five substitutions in the first half? Because yeah, yeah. yeah, it was something yeah. crazy. Like that. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, because we didn't go for jug, we did end up paying for it. But I think this Arsenal team have also shown that they're capable of going on a run and winning most, if not all, the rest of their games, or at yeah. least getting something at the Etihad. There have been games where they've been under the cosh and they've come out victorious or come out without losing, um, like today. And um, yeah. look, we can all micromanage and look at individual decisions, but you've got to look at these things over the course of a season. And ultimately, whoever who ends up top will win, but uh, will win the league. But... Uh, you know, individual decisions that Arteta makes or players make, I, I, I wouldn't get too yeah. caught up in them because you, you, I, I, I get that. Just, just in, yeah, I get that. We, we will. Everyone's going to get more of a chance of time. Just in the interest of the 25 Super Chats I want to react to, we can't spend like 20 minutes on each one as we'll be here until the uh, the game at the Etihad in 17 days' time. Uh, Abs here says, Terry, do not block me. I'm contributing a lot to this channel. We, we the exception of Brandon, uh, they are all... They are all a bunch of deluded Arsenal fans on that panel. Firstly, nobody gets blocked unless you say something racist or sexist or against somebody's religion in a, in a nasty way. Um, that's it. You can challenge me all you want. You're not going to get blocked for that because I'm not a baby. You're not a baby as well. Um, but I don't think the Gunas on here are delusional. They should have a different opinion to you, I would say. Uh, 100% Arteta panicked wrong subs is what Vin Delu, who's a Guna, has got to say. Um, these are Arsenal fans looking like they're at a funeral. Yeah, I'd be disappointed as well today if that happened. They, they should look annoyed. Like, to not be annoyed at today would be very weird. Uh, well, here says it's a young team. That's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. I'll get your super chat from earlier. Uh, Matt here says, I'm so gutted. First half, we battered them. Total capitulation, second half. I don't understand how we let them back in the game. We move, but big opportunity missed. You didn't attack enough. I, I stand by in the second half. You just tried to absorb too early and you sit back against the big teams. And they, this is the thing about all of the top six. If you sit back against them, 
they'll all do this to you. They, they'll all eventually break you down and beat you because our teams don't train. Well, Spurs do. The rest of our teams, and they do it badly, our teams don't train to sit back for night, like for 45 minutes. We don't do it. Uh, we'll go to City and win. No doubt in my mind, simple as. There's a very, very confident uh, Guna here. They're going to go to the Etihad and win. You never know. You might do. Uh, also, what kind of manager takes his captain off with 20 minutes? I, I wanted to ask uh, Brandon about this. He gets taken off. It appears to me, maybe I'm wrong. Odegaard gets taken off quite a bit. Should your captain be getting taken off the pitch in such a pivotal game at that time? I mean, Odegaard taken off. I mean, sometimes there's there's good reasons for Odegaard to, to come off, especially when you're switching to like a defensive sort of shape because he doesn't really do that much defensive work off the ball. But today, it weren't the, necessarily the fact that Odegaard had come off. It was more who was coming on for him that didn't make much sense. And like you said, um, you know, in the first 10 minutes, if that ball right at the end there had maybe fallen to Odegaard instead of Martinelli, then maybe we would be sitting here talking about Arsenal snatching a late win against Liverpool. So, I don't know, in hindsight, you'd have to say, I think Odegaard should have maybe remained on the pitch. Um, but I suppose in, in, in the moment, it kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a tough one to explain, really, Tell, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, I get that. This, I mean, this super chat here says I wanted Tierney substitution for Zimchenko 10, 15 minutes earlier. The problem is if Firmino puts that header over the bar and you win 2-1, nobody would really be questioning the substitute. You'd say we, we got it absolutely right. And I, I, that's the thing. But when you lose, you know, when we took off our centre-backs the other day against Newcastle, we'd have gone and got an equaliser. <laughs> it would have been a genius move. That's the thing with it. What, uh, I, would say, though, what I would say, though, Tell, oh. is if there is any criticism to be had of Mikel Arteta this season, there has been times this season where his substitutes haven't worked in the way that we necessarily expect them to. And he, he has shown a lack of experience in terms of his in-game management and bringing on the right players in the right moments. And Some of like, those have also won us the game, though, Brandon. I mean, like, let's be fair. Yeah. No, I understand, Jess. I understand. But for me... Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, though. Yeah, but I'll for me, this is the first one where I've disagreed with him. Yeah, see, for Pretty me, the right, the, it's been good. Yeah, for me, the right moment to bring on the subs or or to bring on a couple of subs at least would be when when Mohamed Salah missed the penalty because it was clear and obvious to see that Liverpool had just taken over that game. We couldn't string five passes together. We couldn't uh, retain possession um, of the ball and 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 do what we needed to do. And I thought that's when would have been the right moment to start bringing on the subs. Obviously, he left it later than that. And, well, and they got the equalising goal. So. Have, but in your opinion, what substitutions could we have done that would have given us more possession of the ball? Everybody that we had on, on to, at, at that point were our best possession players, Odegaard, Zinchenko, these guys. You take them off, then you're bringing on who? Tierney, he's not necessarily the most... You know, so I, I get what people are saying. Like, of course, to me, the key viewer one doesn't make sense. I would love to ask Arteta what he was thinking there. But his substitutions are the reasons why we won so many games this season. And I guess it wasn't today that it happened. And so we're questioning it. But like, I find it a little bit harsh to be like, oh, my gosh, it's the substitutions. Like Liverpool were really good in that second half. And I have to be honest, I'm not sure anything that we had on the bench really would have stopped them from doing what they did. To be honest, we just were mentally like we got sucked up in the moment. Only Jorginho, to oh. be honest. Yeah. Oh, 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 I don't, do, you, do you think Jorginho in that situation is... I do. I no, do. Jorginho would have got bullied in the field. No, no, no. I think, I think when it comes bullied. to on-ball possession and in terms of keeping control, Jorginho is quite good at that. Just slowing the game down, keeping control of tempo is where he excels now. Where I may agree with you guys, yes, being overrun, but that's where I think the pivot of Jorginho and Partey when he did the Xhaka thing with Partey and Xhaka being in midfield would have worked better just because Jorginho's a bit more smarter with his in-game management and he's got that leadership control as well. And look, ev everything's going to be in hindsight, but I do think there were things he could have done better. And I think this is the first time I've actually said, you know what, your game management this season, I don't understand it. Yeah, but do you know what I'll say is this. You can criticise the manager. To, I did it with, our, with with Ten Hag last weekend against Newcastle. I criticised him because his starting lineup and subs were wrong for me. But 
we've got to get back to this as fans and especially as football content community where you can criticize a manager in a singular game without it meaning you think he's crap and bad and he's got to be sacked and like I think some people really struggle with that mentally when you say I think the manager got it wrong today. But you can't can't say that he normally gets it right. Yeah, I know he does. But today <laughs> I think he got it wrong. I've got to get through some of these super chats. So we will get on some other subjects. Uh, Terry Arsenal will win against Liverpool uh, out of ten. How something you look now? I don't think I look silly at all. I said they'd win two one. I said they'd win it narrowly. It was a narrow two two draw, my friend. If I'd have said they'd win five nil and they lost three nil. That would be a completely bad prediction. But a last-minute equaliser to make it 2-2 from my prediction being a tight 2-1 where Liverpool would be in the game and Liverpool would turn up and Liverpool would have great moments. I would say I'm I'm wrong, like I'm 10% wrong. Come on, Nabil. I know you're so desperate to catch me out, but wait for the right time to strike. Keep your powder dry. Buy a pen and paper. Listen to what I actually say and wait. Because I've got some other things really wrong before. Really wrong. But you come for this one. You've really missed today, my friend. You've, you've really, really missed. Sorry, bro, but you did. Uh, this Mali is dumb, man. Um, does that mean Somali? Is that, is, that, is, that, is that a polite name to call someone from Somalia? Is that okay to use? Cool. I'm just checking. I don't know the rules. I'm old. Um, Kivio's first game at Anfield. Tierney as uh, an un, 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 sorry, an assured defender is what he says here. Uh, Zizou uh, says Martinelli, although I love him, uh, his situation awareness was woeful at times, dribbling in areas where he should have, where he shouldn't dribble, too emotional, cost us. That's what young players do. Um, he had, especially in the middle when he had the ball and he just held onto it and was dribbling in circles. I was he screaming. He also got a goal and assist. Like, we have to be more balanced here. Like, I really, I get it that people want to, like, only focus on the last 20 minutes of that game, but... Had Martinelli not been the player that he is, we wouldn't have been up in that game. Like these players are young, like Terry was saying, but it's like everybody forgets that once the moment that we drop some points. Like I'm frustrated, but Martinelli was really good in this game and he made a couple of mistakes, but he's probably the last player that you need to be looking at. He made a mistake for that the one pass, but we're not 2 0 up if he's not the player that he is. Like, I don't, no, I, don't, I don't. I don't think Martinelli's the one you go out for emotionalness. I, I really don't think Martinelli's the one you go out for. We don't get back in that game if Xhaka doesn't needlessly try and hit out of Trent. That's what really got us back into it. Martinelli didn't really do anything overly emotional per se. It was Xhaka. It was Saka. It was um. Who else was it? There was one more. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. I think it might have been Zinchenko or something. But they were the ones where it was needless little things which got the crowd riled up. Martinelli, I can't really remember him getting the crowd riled up or anything. Listen, I'm scored. not even going to lie to you. I I, I I thought about the Xhaka thing when we when you scored. Immediately after you scored, I'm like, yeah, Xhaka shouldn't have done that. But the rest of the game, we had no control either. So you could say Xhaka shouldn't I, have done I, I that. I can promise but... you, Egal, Egal, I can promise you hand on heart, if Egal doesn't do that, I mean, the first, goal, the first goal doesn't happen. And, and if, and yeah, if the I'm first goal doesn't happen, if, if the Listen, first goal doesn't I, happen, nothing else happens. My I point is, I fully agree with Jess. What we're doing now is we're, we're revising the whole entire game and we're just po poking holes at every single person's individual errors or individual faults and saying that's why this result happened. When in actual reality, when you look at the grand scheme of the game, the first 45 minutes, you could say we controlled the majority of it. The second 45, they controlled the majority of it. And neither team really had control of the entire game. It was a 50-50 game. The, 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 the results fair on the day. And you could even say both teams were somewhat fortunate that neither of them lost because we both had chances to win the game. Yeah, listen, it's very true. And I get what Jess was saying. Um, I understand. What, I think it's, you are right. It's about balance. He did some brilliant things in the game today. Equally, there was those two moments in, in the last 20 minutes when it really mattered where he made mistakes. But at the same time, he's not 27 years old. He's not 30 years old and experienced. He'll learn from that. Some will say, because it, but this is the thing. What people want is overblown analysis. They want the Gooners to sit there and go, got to sell, got to sell Martinelli now after that mistake. And you're not going to, you're not going to get that from Arsenal. But that's what they want. But I, when, well, Man United, when Man United lost our last game, I criticized the subs, the manager, the formation, most of the players. And still in the comments, we got excuses. That's not enough. And one guy DM me going, oh, basically tell we were just trying to goad you into saying the team's shit. And I'm like, but I don't think that, so I'm not going to say it. And you've, you've just got to keep you just got to keep your wits about you when it comes to it. 
Uh, AMT here says, my point regarding the subs, I wanted Tierney first to be sub for Jinchenko because Trent was troubling on our left. I think that's a, fa- I think that's fair, uh, a fair bit of analysis there from you. Um, this is why are we not talking about Arsenal's left back DM Trent Promax? Listen, Trent was great. He grew into the game in that position. And listen, I've been saying for years, Trent ain't no left right back. He ain't no right back. He's a midfielder or an attacker, a playmaker. He's not a defender. He is absolutely god awful at defending today in a more advanced position with a bit of aggression. I think Gary Neville got it right. Trent Alexander Arnold who's a bit nastier, a little meaner, is a better footballer. And you need that out there. Like, you need to f- put that aggression into the game. So very, very good indeed. I, I think you need to tend to some moving out wide as well. I think in that first 30 minutes where Arsenal were all over us, and you swear, I'm not going to say you swear, we had Salah as the wide midfielder. So we, we tried to match City's thing, and it worked eventually, but I never thought it would work when instead of Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, Gundogan, we had Fabinho, Henderson, Jones. Mm-hmm. But what he ended up doing in the end was moving Henderson to the wide midfield position, almost sort of just telling him, run, don't get involved. At the start of the game, he had Henderson in the middle and Salah out wide. So when Trent was running back to try and get back into right back, it was Salah who was trying to you know cover the DM pass and it was never working. That was where he messed up. But Trent in that role today, we saw all the positives of him. We saw why he is still such a good player. He ran that second half. Everything that we done positive, and we done a lot positive in that second half. Ran through him. It's just but, the but switching Tom, off. But Tom, but Tom, you got, this is the thing you got to put it on the manager, and this is why I've been calling Klopp out. Mm-hmm. I know you have because the manager made the decision to move him away from a position that's been costing you goals, points, and games for the best part of eighteen months. His defensive area has been poor, and this is what it's about as a manager. That's why. The kind of the, the Liverpool fans that haven't blamed Klopp for elements of your decline this season have absolutely done my head in because today he makes a tactical change and it works and he deserves credit for it. But therefore, keeping Trent in that position where he's getting ex- exposed every game, he must be criticised for. Um, some more of these super chats we've got to get through. First one here says two takeaways as an Arsenal fan from Singapore. Uh, welcome to the show and, and hello to you in Singapore. The referee was awful. There was no consistency uh, in what a foul is. This is this is the Liverpool side we wanted to see. Uh, pressure and great quality on the touch and distribution. On the referee, Dodds, was it a penalty to Liverpool? Do you think it was a penalty for Liverpool? As soon as Rob Holding got anywhere near Jota, I knew, I knew Paul Team was going to give him the penalty. This referee, I've said it from day one. I remember exact same one a couple of seasons ago when uh, I think it was Cedric and Son, I think it was Son, came at, at, at White Hart Lane. And when he touched him and he fell on the floor, he gave a penalty straight away. There's a reason why there's, this guy's refereed seven games and we haven't won a single game out of the seven games. This You can do this all you want. You want all you want, you guys can do that. Paul Tini has decision. always been against ridiculous. You're talking regardless, about regardless, regardless of it being against being against soft, us. regardless okay. of it being soft, it was a penalty. It was. How, how was that a penalty? He knees him in the back of the leg and kicks his He's running right. in the and, 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 and then they collide together. It is a penalty. It, I don't da, think da, that's da, a penalty. Da, 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 hold on. Da, da, da. You, know, you know earlier on this season when you beat us 3 2, did you think the Jesus one was a penalty? Did you think your one No, but he kicked him. No, he didn't. He just put his foot there. Jesus took his foot there. Word about is not going to work here. Uh, his leg out from underneath him that was a clear penalty this was also a penalty but yeah. all this like oh my god but remember you guys were not done dirty at the at the emirates i know you guys believe that because you still bring it up to this day that was like in september like i need you to let it go seriously you lost well, well, and you dropped I, you two today <laughs> okay like <laughs> it was a penalty so i missed it that's the second of the season get somebody else to take your penalty it, it, for it, I, 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 yeah. I don't think i don't think i can the thing is with penalties and i've always said it you have to get it on target is the bare minimum i don't know why he tries to put them right in the corner <laughs> i'd rather you hit it straight down the middle and it was saved because at least it was going in Rather, you just keep putting it wide. You just keep hitting the advertising yeah, board. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a bad, that. it was a bad penalty. I, I felt that, do you know what it is? It is, a, it is a foul, but it was one of those ones where some people are good divers. And what Jota did was good diving. Where I think it's, 
I, I would love clarification on the rules. I'd love the referees to come out and explain this. Because T, uh, not TNE, Holding didn't make an attempt to touch the ball. He was just, his legs were moving forward. Jota just got in his way, lifted his leg up and stopped running. And then there was contact. And Jota was smart. Essentially, he was smart. And he knew it being in at the cop end at Anfield, he was getting that penalty. I guarantee if he did that at the Emirates, they wouldn't give it. It's one of those penalties that when it's given, you go, there's contact, it is one. But equally, if it, you know you're not getting that away from home. Like, Arsenal got a home cooking today because you always get those decisions in your back garden and you very rarely get them away from home. But I would love a bit more clarity because for me, when you slowed it down, it was like, it wasn't a late tackle or anything along those lines. But listen, those things are always are always going to be given. I, I, Gal, do you think it was a penalty? They seen the Matoma situation yesterday and they're like, you know what, we got to give anything this a penalty. I genuinely believe they probably called all the referees in the league and just said, you know what, we can't have these situations happening again. Especially why are again people doing this whole conspiracy theory? If it's, if it's close, just give it. I generally, that's what I believe. If you, if you can tell me, if you can tell me, if you can tell me, one second, one second, if you can... One second. Listen to what I just said. They just literally apologized today. They said in a game of this magnitude, anything that's controversial that is clearly in the box it can be considered a penalty, they probably were going to give it regardless. I think if it happened to either team, it would have been given as a penalty. I'm not saying that it's not a penalty. I'm not saying that it is a penalty. I'm just saying that was probably the protocol that was given down to them as the referees. You know what? You cannot make a mistake of this magnitude. Yes or no penalty? Yes or no? You can say either way. But you can only complain about it if you don't think it's a penalty. All you think you've said is all well and good. But the question is... But, you, you but you've it's admitted it's a 50 so it is, it is a penalty. penalty. No, because if it is a penalty, then everything you've said is kind of irrelevant. It's not a penalty that VR would reverse. It's a subjective decision. If it's not given, they're not going to give it because VR can't see enough evidence to say that it is a penalty and if it was if it is given they're not going to reverse it that's what i think i generally think it's a 50 50 it's a subjective decision it's one of those things in between the rules where referees will never say this is a categorical uh, penalty and it's not yeah, look i think it's a penalty a lot of people didn't understand what i was saying but it's one of those i don't think you get away from home i think it's a, it's a what i call a home cooking penalty the home team gets them the away teams don't by the way spurs would have got that penalty yesterday the, 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 I mean, that was actually more, that was more obvious than today's. Today's ones, the reason why today's one confused me, they're penalties. But the reason they confuse me is I want to understand why it's a foul if a player stops running and you run through the back of them. Because for me, I feel like penalty should be when a challenge is like, we saw a penalty given the other day. It wasn't in the UK where a guy went up for a header and he falls over and he's on the way to getting up and a player tries to run to hit the ball and trips over him and they gave a penalty. And I'm like, <laughs> And I'm like, surely that can't be one. So do you, do you get what I mean? But I want yeah. clarity as to why, because I know it's a pen because a lot of them are given, but I don't really understand to a degree. But we'll move on from here. This year says unpopular opinion, but we played better today than versus Man United. Ramsdale, man of the match. And, oh, Canate. Sure. Um, Canate was our best player. Th um, this was our best performance of the season by far. In terms of actually... You know, a, a complete performance, 100% it was. I've, with United, you could tell there was a degree of luck. It, we, we could have shot from 40 yards and it would probably have found a way in. <laughs> today, to, today though, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best team in the country. And for that second half, I'm sure Arsenal fans may disagree. I thought we dominated for from minute 45 to minute 90 yeah. with, with a couple of chances going Arsenal's way. We ran that second half. It's just, that's what gets me so downheartened about the results. We should be leaving Anfield today with the best results and the best performance of the season. But no, my winger decides he wants to try and be too perfect with his penalties and hits the advertising board. There the we go. time in two weeks. There we go. And this super chat here from uh, Ozan. Ozan Kabak. Wow. Uh, yes, he plays centre <laughs> back. I love that name. Uh, it says, uh, take, take Salah off penalties. If Milner isn't on the pitch, uh, then Fabinho should take our penalties going forward. Uh, Whale here says it's just experience versus inexperience. We keep forgetting, to be honest. It's not easy to go uh, over there and win. Maybe next uh, we'll, we will, it will not be as e an easy place for players for Arsenal and other teams. Yeah, Liverpool way has always been difficult, difficult for, for, for big teams. Uh, yes, we messed up. I never want to hear Arsenal fans being insufferable. Man United are insufferable. Uh, just go on Twitter and see them celebrating mad. I will say this, by the way. I'm questioning Man United fans' love of United. If you're celebrating Liverpool getting a point, 
in almost any circumstance. And the fact that this helps Man City potentially do a treble and match our three-peat. I'm just somebody... I saw Bav's tweet this the other day, so I'm not going to steal his words. He just said, we're not insufferable, you're just jealous. And this is what it comes down to. Man United fans are jealous that Arsenal might win the league. And they're using that jealousy to cloud their mind. It's clouding their minds. And they're ignoring the fact that Arsenal can match a record that only we have in the Premier League and match a record that only we have in in British football history. That, for me, is far more a problem because that will live on forever. Arsenal being insufferable for a summer, you can just mute things on Twitter and not see it. I will mute the word Arsenal, AFTV, (laughs) Arteta all summer, and I won't see it. I will never forget if City do a treble. I will never forget if they do a three-peat and go on to do a four-peat. I'll never forget if they do a treble and then retain their Premier League title and then get crowned by the majority of the world as the greatest ever English side over Man United's trebles. If you're a United fan celebrating today, firstly, I need to speak to your dad because he's let you down in how he's brought you up and drop the jealousy over Arsenal because them winning the league is small fry compared to our club's legacy being damaged. And it could be damaged. Imagine they support, like last year with Liverpool going on to do the quad. Of course, I celebrated City winning the league because it stopped an achievement that would literally uh, bypass every achievement my club has made. That should be your focus, Man United fans. I can't believe there are United fans that are actually like backing City in this circumstance. It is absolutely mentally insane. Uh, Arsenal need uh, to, sorry, need to consider the possibility of not winning a trophy this season and the effect it will have on a very emotional squad next year. Do you think, um, do you think, Jess, that could impact you badly not winning a trophy this year? No, I, I still think that people are. This is hope. This is this is just hope. Um, this is a young side that everybody said last season not winning any trophies and missing out on top four would completely derail everything that we're doing at Arsenal. And this is it. We'd never touch top four again. The next season they turn around and now they're fighting for a title against probably the best team in Europe with a, 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 a like an absolute robot up, up top. Like, no, it's not going to stop them. Our, the majority of our team, 21, 21, 25, 24, 25, like it's not. I can understand teams that have went a long time that have been together five, six seasons and underachieved, but not this young Arsenal side with a young manager that's still really, you know, we, according to a lot of people, we don't even have a world-class player in our side yet. So we go into the summer transfer window, we buy some more players and we go again. Ramsdale even spoke on it. He said that this is going to be our foundation. You know, it's not going to be the end of the road. It's the beginning. So it's just, I guess you're hoping for it. You want Arsenal to crumble from here, but young players usually go again because they don't know what it's like when you're young, you're kind of young and dumb. You know, you can go again and go again and go again and go again. And so come back from every adversity though. Like every time oh, they've lost a game, every time they've been knocked out of a cup, they've gone on to have six, seven games unbeaten. We're still eight games unbeaten and there's eight games to go. Yes, we've made it harder for ourselves, but come on, like they're gonna they're gonna go, you know what, we bottled top four top four last season and they're now competing for a title. Like it's insanity to think they, they can't go on to do better things. Okay, so let me understand this. So we, we, if we would have won this game, we would have won the league. If we would have lost this game, people are saying we would have lost the league. Now that we've drawn, people are just, I they don't know what to say. To do the I honestly don't know what to say. Hand. One no, second, no, no. one second. This is the thing. Now that we've drawn the game, nobody knows what to say. So half of the people are saying we're going to lose. Half the people are saying we're going <laughs> to win. The reality is just stay level-headed. Calm down. We haven't been in a title race in over 20 years. I get it that there's a lot of pl- fans similar to uh, some of the younger fans that don't know what this feels like. There's eight more games. My heart can't handle it. Your heart probably can't handle it. But the reality is, as Terry said, we're all at grown adults and we can we have our own minds. Everyone's going to say their own. Uh, everyone's going to go crazy and calm, uh, and some people are going to be calm. Right now, I just call for calmness within the Arsenal fan base. Relax. It's not I, over. I hear you on that. This super chat here, by the way, your super chats are starred. We are going to get to them. There's just a lot of them, and we want to be respectful. Uh, calm down. We normally get clapped three or four goals there. A draw is a good result. City lost there. Uh, they have the best home record. They actually have the fifth best. Uh, Spurs, Man United, City, and Arsenal all have better home records than Liverpool, but they have a good home record. They're not separated by much. Same gentleman here says, you skipped my last super chat. We don't. We star them. 
Um, people are talking about bottling need to calm down. Arsenal still six points clear. I mean, that is being forgotten in the cons. I said at the start of the video, they're still six points clear and games in hand are not guaranteed points. You know, can I just say... Sorry, we normally get clapped uh, for four goals at Anfield. City lost there. United 7 nil. They didn't need to write that, did you? Um, <laughs> Arsenal got a draw. Good result. Sorry, Jess. The only thing I was going to say, if we were six points behind City at this point, nobody would be talking about this. Like, it's because we're ahead that people are so concerned. If we were, I was talking to Terry about this the other day. I was like, would it have been easier if Arsenal were comfortable second rather than slim first? And I think that nobody would be talking about us having this failing season and all this mental, you know, destruction that's going to go on with the team if they don't win the title. The more I think about it, I'd rather them have the experience of going for the title and losing it than being comfy second. You know what I mean? And so just think about it that way. Like if we were six points behind City and everybody assumed that they were going to win it and we were just going to finish second, none of this would be going on, you know? To, 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 totally get where you're coming from there. Um, as an Arsenal, it's an Arsenal thing to bottle the league from here and it's a Chelsea thing to win the Champions League from here. Just watch. Um, <laughs> again, I don't know if the Chelsea are winning that Champions League, bro. Uh, the Mancunian way is a point gained how this is the title running. City have lost one game at home in the league. We, we are scoring for fun. We have a game in hand as well at home. Better win it, bro. Uh, can't feel sorry for ourselves. Gutted, uh, but the subs were awful and we, should, we showed inexperience. It's in City's hands now. Not over, but it will be very difficult is what TBG says. Uh, City, Newcastle, United lost to Anfield. A point is fine. Get a grip is what uh, John C uh, says here. Get a grip. You you agree with that, don't you, Do You think Arsenal fans have got to get a grip here and calm down a little bit? Oh, man. It's like every single game. If we lose, draw, it's, it's over. City won the title. Like what Jess said, this I'd rather go through it until the last game and then if we lose, I'd be gutted. But these players, that people say that this is our last chance. These players will have an experience of going through title challenges. And... Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, coach can, yeah, coach can. Pressure makes diamonds. And Mikel Arteta says this team, this young team, is ready to prepare, uh, ready for this pressure for the remainder of the season. Everyone, everyone continues to say, "Oh, Arsenal, Arsenal only, only, uh, Arsenal can't do it. Arsenal can't do it. Arsenal can't do it." You know what? Up to this point. You didn't believe we would still be here. And you know what? I think that team and those players are ready to face the pressure for the remainder of the season. The, the difference is, though, between those other games that we won, you know, Newcastle, um, Newcastle's the exception, but City and United especially, Newcastle, like, they went 1-0 up, but they didn't have some of the better players in the start and the other. You went 2-0 up today. And my, my standing is, if you go 2-0 up in a game, you should see out a 2-0 win or a 2-1 win. You should not blow a two-goal lead. And I think that is where the potential question marks can arise because you did blow a two-goal lead. We went in that game and even until, until that Xhaka thing, and, and I will I will keep saying it, you would have won that game 4-0 if Granite Xhaka hadn't tried to elbow Trent because that, that was the only thing that got us back into it. We were dead and buried. We were about 10 minutes away from fans leaving the ground and not coming back in. We, that, we have we a history that of doing it, you know. Even like, if I thought last season you know would have stopped it. If, if it's not a jacket, it'll be someone else. Because but remember I, I, I when Arteta and Klopp had it, their little, little... Yeah, like... because of that last season. I thought Arteta would have sat there and went, right, look, mm. I done it last season. I, I done us in last season. This season, don't do it. I done it last season. That cost us. But we know what can happen now, so don't do it. Let them get in their own heads. Just but play do, our game. Do, do you not think there was going to be like a bit of a? Because I know we're going to blame Shaka for the L, but something was going to happen where there was a bit of a fight happening. Whether it's like just a bad that, that, tackle that's, happening. That, that's fine. Something. That's fine. If it's, if it's a 50 50 where our play comes out worse, that happens. The thing with Shaka is it was a near off the ball thing, which had no rhyme or reason to happen. That's what got us so well. If it was, let's say, I'm going to go to the Canate and um, Odegaard one. Was it Odegaard or Shaka? Canate, Shaka, where he went in yeah. tough, won the ball. Jack was on the floor. If that had happened to our player, you would have got a, oh, 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 but it wouldn't have carried on. The difference was, it was a completely yeah, needless thing from Xhaka to do, which is why I we went, why have can you Can I say that? one thing before I go? I got to go right now, but I'm going to just say this. 
a call for calmness within the Arsenal fan base. A draw doesn't mean the title race is over. It doesn't, uh, and even if we did win this, people would still say it's not over. So at the end of the day, we go to City, we control our destiny, and just come. We play our next game. Who do we face, if I'm not mistaken? We play, West Ham. We, we play West Ham away. We won there last year. We should just go into that game, brush ourselves off. We win that game. People are still going to be saying, you know what, six points clear. Got to go to Man City next week. That's going to be the real title decider. This wasn't a title decider. This was literally just we needed to break the curse and we couldn't do it, unfortunately. I, I hear you on that, mate. Um, thank you for coming on, bro. I do appreciate it. Uh, the super chat here says uh, a gal senior and a gal junior are the most deluded. <laughs> <laughs> it's like both of them, isn't it? Uh, fans, uh, for your information, we're not winning the league because we are going to lose to City and draw or lose to Newcastle. City not losing any remaining games is what Abs says here. Uh, this states that's a great game. Liverpool played great second half. Odegaard should have stayed on. He gave us an outlet, but we but the but we move was a terrible match. Uh, people, I think you mean terrible result. It's brilliant. Terrific match. match. He's saying terrific match. Oh, terrific match. Sorry, terrific. Sorry, my uh, my dyslexia. Sorry. Uh, people just assume we'll lose at the Etihad, but we got this still. Come on, you Dunas. People thought we were going to lose today. I mean, nobody. I I'm trying to figure out when people were saying that we were going to win at Anfield because I don't remember that. Yeah, I haven't seen much of it, but maybe, maybe, maybe I've missed it. Um, I, I think... had... sorry, let me just get through some more of sorry. this. Round. I've got so many to do. Um, I had believed we won the league when Jesus nodded in the second. My stomach dropped when Liverpool scored at the end. Massively gutted, but we move is what Abraham says here. Yeah. Uh, Arteta should receive a bombastic slap for putting Kivior first ahead of Tierney. The subs were too late. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. I don't even know why. Uh, this here from Kenny says, it's disappointing to bottle it, bottle the lead, but come on. One point at Anfield is not a bad result, given Liverpool's home record. And this Liverpool team is more than capable of winning the rema their remaining games. Come on, you gooners. Uh, when I said Trent was pro-Max Terry, I meant Zinni. Uh, he has the same offensive importance as Trent. And same defensive woes, but he's never singled out for it. Why? Uh, I've, 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 do you know what, Blaze? I've said it many, many times. Because when you Liverpool fans, I'm, I'm not actually sure if you support Liverpool, but when Liverpool fans say this player is revolutionised the right back position, and no one's ever done it before, when you put a player on that level of a pedestal, everybody's ready to take shots. It's as simple as that. If Arsenal fans start talking about Zinchenko being one of the most influential football players. In, in football history. And that is what you're saying. If you say someone's revolutionized a position, they are like Cristiano Ronaldo did. He revolutionized the winger position. He, he almost created that inside forward role who came in later back posts. Mm. Like the most the Mo Salah's position may not exist if Ronaldo didn't help forge it. That's why he's Cristiano Ronaldo. You can't say Trent is a revolutionizing player and then not expect him to get shot. Take, you know, he's going to take big shots for that. That's why it happens, bro. Whether it's right or wrong, uh, that's what happens. Uh, I de definitely agree with Tom. Paul were beat. They were great. Great is what he means, Ed, you think? I, I mean, oh, uh, no, I, no, you're right. They in, were in beat. The first, in the first, the first days, half. if Jacker hadn't done what he'd yeah. done, we, were, we weren't getting back into it. Yeah. I hear you on that. Um, I didn't skip your other super chat. We've already done it, but we, we star them, you see. We can't just read them all out one by one. Uh, Liverpool uh, still has a good squad and experience to play through the nerves if if challenged. Arsenal are slowly getting there. This is a learning curve. I think everybody's kind of echoed that on the show today, to be fair. It's a great super chat. Thank you. Uh, one ba bad game. Every everyone loses their minds. Arsenal will be back. I mean, you have just bounced back every time you've had a bad result this year as well, which is why I don't quite understand. I mean, Sakuna is overreacting. I mean, it's one bad 45 minutes against a team that barely loses at home. Like, I don't understand it. Like, I was more upset about us losing to Man City the way that we did at home because I felt like we had the advantage there being at home because we all know you have that advantage at home. So I don't understand it. I'm very, like, I, I kind of get it. But what it is is that any time that we drop points or lose a game, it's an excuse to be like, that's it. We're not going to win it because you never believed we were going to win it in the first place. And if you're looking at this as anything more than, you know, maybe not our best, but at least we got a point and we moved on. If you're looking at it, anything more than that, I just think you, you either don't want us to win because you have an agenda 
or you never thought we're going to win to begin with, because there's no way you could be overreacting like this off of drawing a game against Liverpool at Anfield. You just can't like, it's just an overreaction to me, despite, yeah. you know, you, you can say things no, that went no. wrong, but to, like it just is. totally understand. Uh, this here says Jess speaks the truth. So many trolls want to discredit her because she's female. Also anti Xhaka agenda has resurfaced due to this game. We're always going to have on, on the Jess stuff. Like again, it's, I, I get exactly where you're coming from on the Xhaka stuff. Of course, people will, it's like people that are, are pretending they like Arteta. It only takes one. I mean, I'm surprised Brandon hasn't called the team a bunch of uh, yet. Like I've been waiting for it for an hour and 25 minutes. I'm joking, but, but there we go. Um, funny how a uh, mid table fan be commenting bottle jobs, uh, et cetera, laughing. Just shows how far Arsenal have come. This uh, this is the same Liverpool team uh, with the third best home record uh, that destroyed United, beat City, and Newcastle. Uh, thank you for that super chat. It's very generous. And Naveen here says, in my opinion, Liverpool need more than 6K fans to pull out a performance. Arsenal fell uh, for the occasion. We move. Come on, you gooners. Uh, United fan here. Thiago is such a baller. He's pass. He's press resistant and takes. Makes Liverpool tick. He's just too injury prone. Nunes also needs to be questioned. Yeah, he did miss a really big chance today again, didn't he? He really, really did. Um, Arsenal will be champions this season. Are you mad? Is what um, uh, 11 Arsenal uh, FC1 has got to say. Uh, we love City. London United fans, where you at? I mean, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know where you're coming for me for. Why F me? Uh, it's, it's not about me today. Uh, Liverpool need... Oh, sorry, I've already done that one there about Liverpool. Uh, we got six, four out of six points from Liverpool. Calm down, is what Anthony here says. Uh, and thoughts on Saka today? Uh, it didn't really come up, uh, Brandon. What, what did you make of Saka's performance? Yeah, I thought he was quite poor today, to be honest with you. Um, he was one of the players who didn't really retain possession very well, um, normally does. Didn't really get into the game very much either. I was expecting a lot more from him uh, in terms of his threat level and that. Towards sort of towards the uh, end of the second half, when we were starting to catch Liverpool on the break and um, he was getting in some one v ones, he started to look a little bit better. But I, I think personally, he should have come off the pitch a lot sooner, and, and Trossard should have came on. But yeah, not one of his best games. But again, you know, Saka is another player who's been exceptional for Arsenal this season. He's bound to have an off game every now and again. Same with Martinelli. Like Martinelli was brilliant today. The fact that everybody's calling them out for that, you know, one mistake towards the end, I think that's wrong. You know, everybody forgets he scored. He created uh, Jesus' goal as well. So, yeah, it's one of them. I mean, in terms of the rest of the season, I mean, if, if City win their game in hand, I think City are favourites for the league, to be honest, because we have to look at the fact that it's at the Etihad. We couldn't beat him at the Emirates this season. Uh, we made too many mistakes at home. It's going to be even more difficult at the Etihad. Um, so, but look, it's a difficult one to, to take, Tell, because I think, again, if we if we didn't go 2-0 up and, and ultimately bottle a 2-0, uh, two-goal lead, I don't think any of this would be such a big talking point. If it was like Arsenal 1-0 and then Liverpool bring it back to 1-1 and then... Two, two, one, two, two. Then you don't really talk about this sort of thing. But the fact that you know we kind of let the two goal lead slip and we didn't really turn up in that second half. But you know, again, I I don't like to get too emotional about it. I've I've made that mistake this season uh, once already this season, and and we have bounced back from adversity. We have, you know, come back and 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 won our following fixtures as well. And we just need to do that again. It is all in our hands. And it's going to be difficult, but, you know, if we want to win the league, it's got to happen, mate. Yeah, no, I hear, I hear you on that, my friend. Um, there was one super chat here that says, how good was VVD's assist for Martinelli's goal? It was great. It was a great one, too, with with uh, Van Dyke for that goal. Did you, uh, see, you, know, um, you know, <laughs> did you see what Expressions put? <laughs> no. Expressions said that Liverpool don't have Virgil Van Dyke at the back no more. It's Joe Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Uh, United must be upset that Liverpool had uh, 4.6 XG. Not, mate, I'm, mate we're, we're 12 points ahead of Liverpool. Like I said, couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. 
Um, have we done already done thoughts on Saka today? Yeah, like, I, I think Saka just. Yeah, have, yeah, have, we, have we discussed my left back being G, being a victim of GBH by the linesman yet? Because I and I joined in late. If we've discussed it earlier, I'm sorry, but my left back did get physically assaulted by the linesman for no apparent reason. I, I'd love to see what the reaction to that is because I've never, and I do mean I've never seen anything like that in my life. It's not yeah. even like. Robertson I, done anything? No, I think the referee's grabbed his arm, and I th- I, this is what it's gonna. It'll be like, a, get off me, and he's just caught him. He, like, yeah, it is what it is. I don't think the referee is. Just, I know it's like the referee elbowed him, but there's elbowing and there's elbowing. Um, uh, but there we go. Someone, I, 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 I don't see yeah. Robertson grabbing his arm per se. I just think Robertson's doing what every other player does. Yeah, yeah. But, but should he be doing again, it? No. Again, but, again, but what you got, what you got to do is go back and look, and I guarantee you'll see this a hundred times if you if you went and found footage. The amount of times they get spoken to and the referees just say, get away, or their arm comes up. But every now and then, you might catch someone. Like, Rack's a parent here. I am. Have you ever, when your kid does something annoying, moved your arm and accidentally... No, no. <laughs> You're a parent, aren't you? No. Are no. you not? <laughs> I swear I've heard seeing you around kids. My nep- no, my nephew. nephews are here from Denmark. All right, I heard kids. kids. But you've got nephews then. I've done it to my daughter, daughter once. Where she was by my side and she asked me, and I said, Let's get off me for a second. I lifted my arm and I elbowed her. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Is he a Liverpool fan? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm trying to convert him. Uh, anyway, anyway, someone here says, Terry, uh, are Gary Neville's points a little more valid now? Arsenal getting emotionally involved too much in games. That emotion, especially from Jack, contributed. I think it contributed, but at the same time, I stand by what I said at the top of the show an hour and a half ago. And, I, and, and Jess, I said this during the game, so you know, Jess will corroborate this. They became too negative defensively. In fact, I don't believe they were emotional enough in the second half. They didn't. They weren't aggressive enough. They didn't press enough. They didn't attack enough. That is what they should have done because I look at the exchange in that second half of like a, a, a boxing match. You've got to lay a glove. You can play... Listen, Israel Adetani did it perfectly last night. You can play possum for a moment and be defensive and cover up so that what you're meant to be doing is you're doing it so the other, the other team open up. But then you've got to be willing to take a risk yourself and open up and for a punch. What Arsenal were doing, they were just covering up the whole time. They weren't laying a glove on Liverpool and making them think. That was the issue here for me more than blaming Xhaka. Yes, it got the crowd up. And yes, it was a catalyst. But then what Arsenal should have done is what they did in the opening 35 minutes. Outclass Liverpool because they're the better team this year. Outplay them. Be more aggressive. Take a risk. And you might have shut them down. You could have easily conceded yourselves. But that's what I think the biggest problem was today is Arsenal didn't attack enough. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes... Attack is the best form of defence. And yeah. Arsenal just sat back. They sat back for 45 minutes. Not the last 10, 15, 45 minutes. And it was too long. It was too long. And, and the whole, like, Neville saying that, he said that, like, eight, nine games ago. And we've won. We've been unbeaten for eight games now. But like, he said that when, you know, we were celebrating. So you're – you thank you for this. You, you kind of removed the context from it and applied it to this game. We, I mean, knock on wood, we've had no red cards this season. So we're not too emotionally invested. It was Xhaka. He did something dumb. It riled up the crowd. It didn't have, I'm sorry, but anybody who thinks that Xhaka ruined the, like, he's the reason why we lost or we drew that game is doesn't watch enough football for me. Cause I'm sorry. You could really lay it on Arteta. You could lay it on the midfield, not having control. Like, it wasn't being too emotional or anything like that. And if you thought that Liverpool crowd was going to be quiet for 90 minutes, I think you're smoking. Like, I really do. Yeah. Well, th- th- this is the... Um, I hear you. This, Liverpool man says, I don't understand how XG stuff works. Apparently, this game's expected goals were higher than our 9-0 win against Bournemouth and our 7-0 win against United. The game didn't feel that dominant. But the way XG works is this. So, Everton had a really high XG against Man United yesterday. Because they had lots of shots, but they never got any of them on target. But you missing like the, the chance of that goal going in is is so, so said like the chance of a goal going in is 0.1, 0.2. But you take that shot five, six, seven times. You multiply it every time that shot's taken. But in reality, the viewers are watching again. That was a shit shot. That was a P roller to the goalkeeper. That's gone wide. But your XG keeps mounting up. You only really have very low XG when you're not having attempts on goal. But sometimes in games, you could have better opportunities but no one gets the shot off or there's last minute blocked. And if a shot is blocked, XG don't count. So it's yeah. all a little bit. That's why it's, it's a good stat, but like all statistics, you need to delve into, in, into them in more. Like uh, we, had, we had a really big XG game today because we missed the penalty. And, you know, that's like 0.8 XG or whatever it is. 
Obviously, yeah. the one right at the end where Canate oh. that's got that'll be a good 0.8, 0.9 xG because yeah, 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 yeah. practically on the but, line. But all, like, all Arsenal's, uh, Arsenal's counter attack at the end, which was a good was, was was a good opportunity, but because it didn't zero. result in a shot, it's a zero. It's zero. It, yeah, that doesn't even count as a chance. And for me, that was that was probably a on paper was a better chance than like Martinelli's opening goal because that was a simple ball through and then it's one on one on goal when he overhit the pass. So yeah, it's that's why the stats are almost mean. one. Yeah. Penalties are almost zero point like they're like zero point nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that would have been that's a big one. Um I think the game is more or less the exact same regards regardless of the uh, Jack uh, the, the Jack a moment. A smooth uh, brain football analysis to scapegoat uh, Xhaka. This is Anfield for fuck's sake. I, I promise you, it's not. I promise you, this game is not the exact. If Granit Xhaka doesn't do what he does, the crowd doesn't get up, and we don't score that first goal. No, I do. do. I do we hear that. Score it later on. But so we again, I think, I, think it's a, I think it's a catalyst. It's a catalyst. But Arsenal, what they should have just done, like if you know you're in the ring and you're a fighter, you if, if they'd have come out in, in the second half and created two or three really good opportunities to score and made you worry again. The crowd would have seen it, it. It can't be an excuse for Arsenal. It, they no, can't no, sit there no, and exactly. go, oh, it's, well, Xhaka Jack, done it's, this, so we don't have a chance. It's a catalyst, but it isn't the reason. The reason yeah. they... They, they, the reason they didn't have a chance. Mm. Sorry? I think a lot of Arsenal fans sat here, and you were here, Tom, and, and took a lot of the, like, Arteta made mistakes, Xhaka shouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. Like, nobody's really making mistakes, but at the same time, like, you're not going to get a lot of Arsenal fans that are not going to take that point. So we're not going to turn around and act like it was it's the end of the world. We're just oh, yeah. not. But I can, I understand what you're you're saying. It's like, but it was Jacka, it was Jacka, it was Jacka. Like when you have players and you've done it with your own players mm-hmm. that have made mistakes and probably shouldn't have done things, but you're not going to stick the boot in and and shove them off a cliff because I mean it was one it's one thing. It was a one little mistake that you cannot nail that down and say that was it. It wasn't a last minute penalty. You know where he fouled. It wasn't a red card. It wasn't anything. It yeah. was just one it, moment it, it, in the first half, and there was mm-hmm. forty-five minutes where that team should have stepped up. So, I mean, I get where you're like, it was Xhaka, and Arsenal fans need to say that that's the reason, but it just isn't. Your, and your fans are... can't say it's the reason because it, it's not the reason because we scored later on in the game when Xhaka was. It, so it, then what's your point? So what's your point? But, you keep saying the Xhaka, but, thing, the Xhaka thing. So what's your point? But I, my, my point is. In these games, in these situations, there's got to be a degree of game management. And I think Arsenal have actually been very good at that this season. Today, you got it wrong. And I think it's even worse considering how you managed the first 30 minutes. How many times was Gabriel or um, Partey down when the ball was out of play for a minute, even though they weren't injured, just to kill off the crowd? You've done exceptionally well at killing off. When you come to grounds like Anfield, the whole point is neutralise the crowd. That will hurt the players more. He's done that really well for the first 30 minutes and then Xhaka undone all that good work. And if we hadn't... I'll say this much. If we hadn't scored up until half-time, if we went in at half-time 2-0, you'd probably win the game. But that's, but how, me, the, that's how it goes because the, because he, he set now. it off and we scored. All of a sudden, yeah, everyone no. went, oh, there we go. That. I get that. You're saying that and you're saying that from a Liverpool fan perspective because you've seen... like, But if it was as easy as you're saying it is, then why aren't people walking up to you guys this season and beating you off at home? Because it's not that easy. You guys haven't been good, but it's just not that easy. So I get that you're like, well, you guys just should have done. It's all in hindsight. Arsenal, we didn't manage the game as good as we could have. It feels terrible to, to, but you guys were never going to not do anything for 90 minutes. Because if that was not 90, it's not going to happen. It's different when it comes to, this club this season because we we've written off this season so Arsenal is our only remaining big game at home. But I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, congratulations! It, 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 we're not look. We won our cup final seven. Though. That was all we cared about. This, this, <laughs> this was this, this was one where we could leave it going. You know, we've got a little bit of pride. But mm. I, I think it's different when it comes to like a Brighton or a Leeds or something where we just sit there and go. It, in the end, it doesn't really matter. It's the wrong mentality to have, but that was the mentality we've had this season. When it comes to these big games, you can't. These little things change things, and I don't. Th- I don't agree with it, but I can understand if it happens at the end of the season. If Man City win this league by one or two points, the finger will be points at Xhaka for this moment. And no, it, 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 no, you're wrong. 
you will point at it because you think it is. But what I'll point at is the fact that, you know, holding made the pen had the penalty decision, like all those types of things. Like the, in the nice possible way, the holding penalty decision in the end, it ended up being more beneficial because we were out of the game for the next it, 10 minutes. No, we had so many mistakes. The penalty decision, you had Zinchenko getting nutmegged on the, I mean, yep. he had his hand in his head. Like, yep. like I, I kind of understand what you're saying. Like, you're going to be like, that's going to be the moment. Just, just in the, it just, won't be the one moment. Just, just, in the, just in the interest of time, I've got another couple of super chats to do here. Uh, always thought Pens was Mo Salah's weakness, um, is what Omar says here. Uh, and, uh, Rowley here says, I promise you it is Liverpool, it is Liverpool to up. Uh, in the same breath, you just said it's not the same game if Xhaka doesn't do it. Then said Arsenal uh, can't use it as an excuse. Contradicting yourself uh, is what's been said there. Listen, um, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Everybody that's hit the like button. I know about 38% of you on the poll said you're going to do it at the end. So get that done now. Please subscribe and click the bell notification button. We're back tomorrow. Uh, more content in the morning, top six show in the evening as well, which will be a great one to unpack after a brilliant weekend of football. Lots of chopping and changing and uh, everything else. Check out the top six podcast on Spotify. Go and go and download that now. If you haven't got the app already or go and follow us now, give us a nice little five star review and put us on auto download record numbers over the weekend. Again, it keeps growing and growing up to number 29 in the UK in terms of uh, podcast downloads this week. Um, I'm pretty impressed with that, considering who, what companies own the, the, the lot of the the companies that own a lot of the podcasts around us. To be independent and do it that way is amazing. So thank you all very much. Whether you agree with us every time or not, that's the point of the football terrace. No echo chambers. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye bye.